Well, this is very, very exciting. This is what you guys have been waiting for. Uh, we have three gentlemen about to join us, and I want you to give them a big, big welcome, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, here come Chris Evans, Anthony Mackey, and Sebastian Stan. Wow, that must feel good. It always feels good to hear that, right? Well, welcome, guys. Uh, everybody's been busy. How are you, Chris? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. Yeah, you guys just finished uh, finished up a little movie you've been working on. Is yeah, that right? yeah, we just finished a couple days ago. Very exciting. Yeah, I, and uh, you guys know what they're talking about. From uh, will it be uh, 2018 when we see Infinity War, right? That's right. Um, what for you? Uh, this is, I think, your seventh or eighth eighth film that you'll be Captain America in, which right. is amazing. Yeah. Um, does that make it easier for you, or is it, uh, does that not really affect the challenge? Uh, affect the challenge. I mean, it certainly becomes, you know, is, you're very familiar with the role, you're familiar with the people you're working with, so the working experience gets a bit easier. But uh, the pressure's still there. You want to make sure you continue to make the fans happy and, and try to outdo the last film. Sure. And it's great, uh, you know, in, from the comics, obviously, you know, Winter Soldier started in Captain America, the Falcons started in Captain America comics, so it's great to have these guys as part of the mythology, uh, and they're very, very close to the heart of the character, too. The friendships that you have and rivalry at one point sort of define your character in a lot of ways, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For you guys, what's that like, um, you know, Sebastian, for you, with the character, I mean, you're the one of all these guys who got to be a villain first on screen. Um, talk a little bit about bringing that character to life and, and where it's at. Uh, well, it's always a nice guessing game for me with how they, you know, where they, they're going to take him, I guess, because um, he, maybe he'll always be on that edge, you know, sort of can go left or right. So um, that, that's always fun to play. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I, I, I felt lucky that they took the story in that direction. And then obviously, like, it's a big part of our... Um, storyline in the comic books and so you know it needed to be explored great and then anthony i know that your character falcon he means a lot to you because of the history i mean it's a very important character in history of comic book publication the first african-american superhero yeah um and just you know the falcon represents a lot of different aspects of our society today that i feel sometimes can be misinformed and misused i mean the fact that he's a military vet you know that's something that i'm very proud of as well um the fact that he was a, uh, a counselor for soldiers at the VA hospital, you know, before he teamed up with Cap, is something that I'm proud of as well and something that we added to make him, you know, more of a, a relatable, stronger character. And then, uh, Chris, you know, uh, in addition to being Captain America, you've been in seven other comic book films as well uh, for uh, almost 14. Have I? <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> I, it's actually more than anybody else. More than... What do you mean, like anybody else? Anybody else. And anybody else? I think so. Like 14. Fucking You've been like five heroes, right? Because <laughs> you got Scott Pilgrim, you got Snowpiercer, you got The Losers, you right. got two Fantastic Fours, right. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, right, right. Oh, right. the Ninja Turtles. Of course, yeah. Oh. Hey, you're impressed. Right, right. Oh, <laughs> you're going to hear about that one, all right. I was really excited about that one. I love Casey Jones. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, that's something, obviously, you didn't set out to do. It's kind of a happy coincidence, but uh, yeah. uh, I guess that shows how big comic books are as IP in, in Hollywood these days. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's their great source material. I mean, they obviously have a built-in fan base, but they're, they're, they're made in films because they have such good uh, characters and story arcs and uh, wonderful writing, and it only makes sense. And one of the things that you've gotten to do is work with a lot of great directors, obviously. And I know that directing is important to you. You've already directed a film and, yeah. and, and aspire to do more. Um, what was that directing experience like for you? And, and did it affect your acting at all? Uh, it's, it's challenging. It's, it's tough to be in it while you're directing, you know. Um, you certainly see a lot of your bad habits. You know, when, when you're in the editing room, it's tough to kind of, oh, God, I suck. Um, 
But it's, it, it was fun. I liked the responsibility. Uh, I'm, I'm eager to do it again. The first time was a real learning process. And um, yeah, I think uh, after, after uh, I, start, I start doing a play in a, in a couple months in, in New York, and then I think when I'm done, oh, great. All right. <laughs> and I think when I'm done with that, uh, I, you know, I'm gonna start looking for another, another script to direct. Yeah, it seems like a next natural step for you. That's fantastic. And Anthony, this, I don't know if you probably did the math on this, but this is your 15th anniversary on screen because 8 Mile, this is the 15th anniversary of oh. 8 Mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob yeah. Doc. I was like, yo. <laughs> I still rap. Come on, man, let's go. Come on, go, go, go. We're going to reenact the battle. <clears throat> that would be funny. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> That's great. Well, um, and you know, so many great directors you've worked with as well, and, and projects like Hurt Locker. I mean, uh, for you, what do you see as the biggest challenge and the biggest opportunity that you have as an actor right now? What, what's, uh, when you look at yourself now and the things you've done, the things ahead, what are the things you're working on, or maybe what are the things that you're most excited about? Um, well, for me, the biggest challenge is once you get in this realm of, you know, Marvel superhero movies, it's harder for you to be considered for those smaller independent movies. Because they're like, oh, you're a movie star now. You wouldn't, you wouldn't move on to do this, you know. But a vast majority of my career in the films that I've done that have been recognized started off as small films. You know, Half Nelson with Ryan Gosling was like a $2 million movie, you know. But it went on. Hurt Locker was a small movie. You know, nobody was fighting for that movie because <laughs> there was no money and we were in the desert, you know. <laughs> I, we were the only idiots that took it, so, but it worked out. So, you know, it's, um, that, that's one thing that I've been aware of when I see certain movies and I call my agent because I always yell at my agent. And I'm like, why wasn't I considered for that? You're on your last leg. <laughs> I love yelling at my agent. <laughs> Let's call him now. No, right now, I'll call That'd him. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Uh, Sebastian, uh, I really enjoyed The Martian, and uh, I was going to ask you, working with Ridley Scott, what's, uh, how was that? I mean, uh, such a fascinating act, uh, director. It was like walking in the desert in the dark. <laughs> no, I mean, because he doesn't give any, any direction whatsoever. Like, he just leaves you completely alone, so you don't know if you're doing well or not, and maybe that's, there's something about that that kind of keeps you on your toes, I guess, or... Um, but it was it was a great opportunity, you know. Always always trying to kind of surround yourself with good people and that that will sort of inspire you to be better. That's kind of what you go for. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, all three of you have stage experience. I know it's important to all three of you. And and with these movies, I don't know that it would naturally occur to people, but it seems to me that that would make it be it would make it easier to be in films that have a lot of green screen because you have to there's empty spaces and you have to project that there's things there that you don't see. Uh, which happens all the time on stage. Uh, do, you, do you think that that might be uh, beneficial for you, or is it a completely different experience? I would say that I think uh, the, the most beneficial uh, tool you can develop to apply to green screen is just having um, a really vivid imagination as a child. You know, as a kid, that's where you're really kind of, uh, you know, soaked in make-believe and just uh, pretending, you know, it's like a group of Muppet babies or something. You know, you're really just... <laughs> You, you just you're just playing and you're having fun. So so if you had a really vivid imag imagination as a kid, I think that's uh, I think that's what gets you through those green screen days. Uh, you know, one of the things that fans talk about a lot, uh, you know, with the with the changes in corporate uh, Hollywood, uh, you know, with Fox and Disney and such, there's a chance to see potentially someday uh, the Avengers versus the X Men. I wonder if is that something that's uh, <laughs> it's kind of fun to think about, uh, or with a Fantastic Four, and you could play two characters. I know, like a little parent trap, right? I, I, I would love that. I, I really would. That'd that would be, awesome. be a lot of fun. Uh, I, that... I doubt they'd ever let me do that, though. Yeah. Well, there's the invaders, too, and that's two of the members of the Human right. Torch and Captain right. America CB set. I, recently, I happened to be sitting next to Hugh Jackman at this... Wow, all right, here we go. So, wow. I, I didn't Got know that. what other awkward thing I could talk about, but to be like... Am I going to see you soon? I, I don't know. And, um, but uh, he said a couple things to me, and I'll just, I'll just leave it at that, because I feel like otherwise I'm going to get into trouble with somebody. But You know you just, you like, just... lit things like <laughs> I know. You just so think about that. What are you that. doing? No, but, but he, you know, I asked him, because I, I kept thinking, I was like, he, he said whether or not that was 
Logan was supposed to be the last Wolverine thing or whatever, and, and it's, you know, he said to me what he's, I think he publicly said out there, which was like, he's, he's been thinking about it, and he, you know, it's on his mind, so... I don't know. He may be. <laughs> oh, Sebastian. Oh, I think Sebastian. I think uh, phone's off, please. Please. Uh, can you rewind the last 15 Internet seconds? Works, right? <laughs> Twitter just broke. <laughs> Way to go. Awesome. Well, let's keep that going. Um, so, Justice League. How about you guys fight the Justice League? Maybe we could do <laughs> Who is that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rewind the last 35 seconds. <laughs> Record over that. This just in. Sebastian Stan says, X-Men versus Avengers and, Aven and Justice League, what is that? <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, the camaraderie on the set and working with the same people over a period of time. Uh, you know, I got to be on a couple of the, the sets with you guys over the years, and uh, it seems like everyone really genuinely enjoys each other's company. Um, for you, what's a, is, there, is there a friendship, for any of you, a, a friendship or a connection or a mentor that you found through the Marvel movies that uh, you would point to as being especially uh, important to you? Sure. I mean, I guess it's, it's kind of an obvious, it's real low-hanging fruit to say Downey. I mean, he's been so, so, he's such a wonderful guy and, and so talented and so experienced and so supportive and um, he, he's just, he's always been in my corner. I, I've, I've always felt supported by him and, and, and he really brings everybody in to the group and, and makes sure everyone feels welcome and especially on this last one. You know, I mean, I, I always try to, no matter what it feels like for me, I try to imagine what it feels like for him because he really did start this and he really is so irreplaceable. Nobody can ever be Iron Man. That's not... Nobody, you know, it's not a role like a Superman or a Batman that can kind of find different incarnations. No one can touch it. No one can. And, and, I, and I wonder what that feels like to kind of come to the end of the road. And, and, and I think he must, he must be going through a whole cocktail of emotions because he really, on this last film, has gone so far out of his way to really bring... You guys know, when, 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 when Downey's on set... During lunch breaks, he makes sure everyone goes. It's it's called the Downey lunch. Downey has his own separate. He has a separate, uh, you know, caterer. It's a really nice spread. It's quite lovely. Really um, nice. Really but, nice. But it's really nice. You cooked a whole goat. It's really beautiful. Uh, Just a goat. But like, he'll bring I'll everyone cooking. over, and and you know, I I can only imagine what it might feel like to be someone who's coming into the Avengers world for the first time or playing one of the supporting roles in another franchise and maybe feeling a little intimidated because, I mean, I feel intimidated still sometimes. And, and, and he just really, uh, you know, just opens his arms and, ugh, God, it sounds so cheesy, but he makes it a family. Um, and, and, and none of this would happen without him. And, and so, you know, the easy answer for me is Downey. And tweet. <laughs> Send. <laughs> What about you guys? Uh, anybody uh, that you would point to, or maybe a um, experience? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I always, I, I, I love, for me at least, I love coming back because now over the years, like, it's seemingly like we always pick up where we left off. I mean, a year goes by, maybe we don't all see each other, but it never, it never seems out of step, you know, with, with everyone, and, and you just don't get that on every, on every movie set, I guess. I would say these two guys, uh, and not because they're here, because... <laughs> They know I would tell them if I hated them. But I pretty much primarily talk to you two more than... And I mean, we talk, if not daily, every other day. Like, you know, like friends. Because a lot of times you do movies, that's when your best buds, the movie wraps, and they change their number. <laughs> it's like, yo, you're not going to text me that new number, dog? I don't get... Nah, fake friends, all right. So, you know, these are... Uh, these are, these are the two cats, if they call me and tell me they need bail money, I got them. <laughs> hey, that's legit. That's legit. Think about it. Most of your friends won't bail you out. It's true, isn't it? It really <laughs> is true. Uh, and uh, for you, uh, Captain America is one of those characters that uh, he, he's more than a superhero because he just what's encompassed in his, his values and his history and the heritage of the character all the way back to 1941. Um, 
Does that, uh, is that a, a, a wind at your back or is that even more pressure for you? Like, is it, it, is it easy for you to connect with that or does it feel like a little overwhelming? No, it's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's so nice. Sometimes, I mean, I've, I've played, uh, you know, not so savory characters in the past and, and it's, you know, you got to be in a really nasty headspace and you can't help but take some of that home with you and it can feel like a little bit of a storm cloud, but playing Cap is just, uh, it's such a nice energy to try and encompass every day and, you know, you, you can't help but try and compare it to your own life and find kind of analogous circumstances where you can live up to the person you, you try to portray each day. Um, no, it's been, it's, it's a blessing. I love it. Fantastic. So you walk around every day thinking you're Captain America. <laughs> Everybody heard that, right? All right. As a walk, day. he runs. He runs, yeah. <laughs> like you go to the grocery store and you're like, isn't this not a fresh enough produce? I'm Captain America. I, I would say I, I walk around kind of comparing myself. Like, what would Cap buy? <laughs> Don't get the ice cream, so get the broccoli. You know? <laughs> Awesome. Apple pie, apple pie. <laughs> Sebastian, do you have, uh, since your character is a little more uh, fearsome and intimidating on screen, do you ever have young, youngsters come up to you and aren't quite sure what to make no, of it? No, no one ever takes me uh, as a villain, so I don't, I don't really, Aww. you know, I have to like try and change that. But, <laughs> no, I'm, it's always very humbling. I don't know. I mean, it, uh, you know. They, some people ask me about Anthony, which is always, you know, something I kind of have a face for. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's great. I don't know. It's fantastic. And then, so no one's throwing shields at you, like when you're walking down the street. Because we could arrange that. There's a lot of shields here. I'm sure, yeah. Not, not yet. So let's do that later. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose there's not much we can say about Infinity War, right? I mean, because the... It's a war of infinite proportion. <laughs> that's not the running time, though. That's it. That's it. <laughs> what, you started to say something? Oh, no, I was going to defend Sebastian. I was going to say he wasn't a villain. He's a victim, really. <laughs> exactly. Really? It's not his fault. He's brainwashed. I have a soft spot. Uh, and in Infinity War, like, uh, obviously the Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's just run, get back to the subject. <laughs> go back to what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with Infinity War, the, the Guardians, did you guys get to hang out with them much or not so much? What can we say? What, what do people know? No, we hung out a lot on set. Um, people we had know. a good time. Oh, yeah, the trailer's out. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Guardians Remember? are in it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Trailer. All right, yeah. It's a trailer. Thor looks at him and goes, who are you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. That was a good Thor, by the way. Yeah, yeah he really grumbles those lines out. Yeah. Um, I'm Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Love that guy. Love that guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're great. I mean, that, that was the best part of this movie, is that you really kind of... It really was, for the first time for me, feeling like... Um, the first few movies, it almost feels like it's happening to somebody else. You kind of feel like you're watching it happen, but you're not actually a part of it. Um, and th this was kind of the first movie where you actually felt like you had a seat at the table and you belonged. And it was so nice to have all these other franchises that you've watched and admired come to a set where you're like, oh man, I, I belong here. And, and all, all these great people are part of a movie that we're all doing together. And, and it was just... It was just wonderful because all those franchises, I mean, let's be honest, Marvel doesn't miss. They haven't missed yet. Like, they, they're, they're batting a thousand. I don't know how they do that. No, they, they don't miss. And, and so to see all of these actors come together from all these other franchises that I've seen as fans, uh, you know, be exchanging dialogue with me, it was just kind of, it was overwhelming and, and, and uh, really just um, so satisfying because truly 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 there's not one bad apple i know every movie says that we all get along so well but they're just saying that because they probably hate each other we we truly all get along so well there really isn't one bad apple now there was one day we were on set and we were doing this scene that's in the trailer where we're all running into battle and sebastian's hair is doing this and, shit. <laughs> and uh <laughs> it does that it does and um you know all of us are on set and it's just like 
40 superheroes. And I look to my right and I see Tom Holland and... That might be the only problem on the are we done? on that movie. Are we done? All right. Are we? Are we? Thank you. Uh, I see Tom Holland and Dave Batista. <laughs> Scream for that guy, not Tom Holland. I see the two of them over in the corner, and Tom is literally the size of Dave's leg, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. But Batista jumps up and does like a kick punch move. Oh, Superman 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 punch. He's teaching him how to And I was like, Superman yo, you're about to kill him. What are you doing? <laughs> so I run over. I'm like, what, what's going on? And then you see Tom try to do it. And it's like, Meh. you know, <laughs> and it's just we have there were so many different moments like that on set where you see people just do stuff where you'd step out of it. And you're you're like, a, you know, it's, it's like a, you're a voyeur in a way like you're, you know, you're a spectator. So uh, things like that are a lot of fun, like things with Chris over in the corner doing stuff. <laughs> that day was really fun. I know the day you're talking about. That day was truly, you'll see, it, 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 it was a great day yeah. with a lot of great people, and it was uh, overwhelming and really humbling. Yeah. It is amazing how Marvel doesn't miss, you know. I mean, I think yeah. the odds are the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, if you, two years before that film comes out, if you say to somebody, how's this movie going to do? Most people would not have thought that, I mean, those characters don't even have a lot of traction in the comic book world, yeah. and, you know, so it's pretty phenomenal. And Black Panther coming up, everybody's pretty excited about that. How good is that trailer? That trailer is so good. It's crazy. It's crazy. Maybe that's it, you know, like they always, they always understand the tone of every character and kind of the movie and how it, how it applies. And that was probably the tricky thing about this movie is just kind of blending all those tones and how every character is separate individual world kind of comes together. It's pretty extraordinary. I mean, there's really never been anything like it. I mean, the universal monster films of the 30s and 40s, those characters would overlap sometimes, you know, but nothing like Marvel. I mean, there, there's really, there's no precedent for it. And I, I guess it's a testament to Kevin Feige in a lot of ways that, it, it, you know, the trains keep moving and they don't derail, you know, that keep people That's keep the thing. There's not enough time in this movie for you to not see some face you care and recognize, you know, in every second or frame of the two and a half hours that it's going to be or whatever. Yeah, it's but like I'm waiting at some point in time when all this is said and done and we're old and doing a soap opera, I want, like, for IMAX to show all the Marvel movies in sequence, like, over a weekend, you know? Because I think it would be really cool to see how those characters track in and out and see the entire universe through the course of all the movies. Yeah, and it, it tracks so well. I mean, really, there's only one scene in any of the movies that n now you have to act like it didn't happen. It's when Tony Stark, you know, shows up uh, at the uh, at the bar at the end of uh, Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, it's the only one that doesn't make sense. Well, that was that was Hulk. Yeah, he was just drinking. Yeah, he was just drinking. So, um, you know, and Black Panther also one of the things too is we're seeing the expansion into. I mean, that soundtrack looks like it's going to be phenomenal. I mean, I'm not sure there's any Marvel movie with that ambitious of a soundtrack, which, um, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, uh, previous hits, but this is new stuff, so that, that's yeah, to, exciting. To get Kendrick Lamar to do your title cut, that's, uh, that's, I'm like, I just want to be in a video. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then... Um, I do. Y'all tweet that Anthony Mackie wants to be in a video with Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> I met him, but I met Kendrick last week, by the way. Yeah. You're really making a push, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> we was hanging out. We went to the national championship game together, me and Kendrick. I was out there when he was performing and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is kind of a goofy question, but how many shields are there on set? Because I imagine you have a throw-in shield, you have a... There are a lot, there are a lot. And I didn't realize, one of the prop guys just told me the average life of one of the shields is like four days on set. After four days, they get a new one in there, just wear and tear of eBay. apparently me just being irresponsible or something. I mean, just bumping it into things. You know, they don't want any chips or scratches or dings, you know. So the, the actual shields, the actual real heavy ones, which are a nightmare to use, um, they, they burn through them pretty quick because they want it to be perfect. But then there's a series of rubber ones that, you know, when I got to hit somebody with it, you know. With a metal shield. Yeah, you break some teeth. Because then you go through villains every four days. That's right. You know, right. get a chip a tooth, you're out. Pretty much. 
Um, and for what, Anthony, what have you learned about flying? What can you tell me? What's your sort of approach to flying as an actor? Like, what do, what do you have to do? What do you have to make sure you don't? Second do? unit. It's a, very, <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, no, it's, it's very difficult. And I've requested not to land anymore. Oh, landing's tough. Because that's the, nothing about us. I've know seen how those to little land. gag reel. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's never easy. Brothers don't land well. So that's my whole thing. It's pretty much me. And when I'm about to land, they put me down softly, put the stunt man up, and he lands. Because otherwise, I'm in concussion protocol every week. <laughs> they take you behind the tent. That's pretty much it. That's great. And then, uh, Sebastian, with the arm, what's, is, was that, uh, is that... A- I, my favorite thing to always say is, always, I'm like, is that, is that a new arm? Is that the... Because I never know how many of them they have. I mean, they have, like, I, I think there's a few as, as well. But that, that's been its own evolution for Why don't the last you talk about your years. arm process, man? I know what you want me to say about it, and, uh, you know, it, it is KY Jelly. I mean, that's what you want to say. You want me to talk I didn't, about I just, the people want to know about your arm process. I didn't I, say KY. How many parts is it? Is it movable? Is no, it comfortable? No, it's, it's, how it's much one KY arm. Jelly? How much one. KY Jelly does it take to put on a Winter Soldier arm? You take the KY Jelly home with you. Yeah, I mean, no, what I, do you do with it? I don't. I bring it with. Do they spend a lot of time? Uh, no. Do they spend a lot of time trying to find you in the KY Jelly? There I mean, is, the people want to know. There's four uh, people helping me with it, so that's a lot to work with, you know. But you have four arm men, people, four arm first. and women. I mean, you know, men and women that are there, <laughs> that are there together. So it's a KY <laughs> KY casserole. That's what it is. That's his uh, arm. I don't yeah. Know. Wow. But you know, it used to be like two different pieces, and then over the over the years, they've figured out a way to kind of make it all into one. Which is, it's just the guys at Legacy are unbelievably talented with that. I don't know how they make it happen. You just feel there's a warehouse somewhere just full of shields and arms, just like at all the refuse and Iron Man and armor and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, well, let me ask you guys also. Uh, you, you can't say too much about Infinity War, but you mentioned this one day that you thought was pretty cool with all the people there and everything like that. Uh, but is there one thing about maybe uh, your characters, not, not plot-wise, more about where they're at, that you can give us a little just kind of flavor of? And you have a beard in the film, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I had a beard. I got a beard. They gave me the beard. <laughs> I'm so happy about that. <laughs> You know, I think there's a real, it's, it's always tricky because I know there's a lot of purists who kind of want, you know, Cap to look a certain way and, you know, the, even, even, even the colors in the suits, you know, I remember even with Winter Soldier, the suit being that stealth suit, the Navy suit, which I loved. I loved. It brought your eyes out. Thanks, man. Dude, it made them pop. Made them go back and watch that movie. They pop. Versus that first Avengers suit, which, you know, um... It was not one of my faves, no. But, but uh, you know, so it, it, to try and, you know, discuss whether or not we let the look deviate from the origin, um, you know, went through a few discussions. But, but it was really nice that they let that happen, and, and it lends itself to the arc and to what he's, what he's going through. Um, i got to be careful. I don't want to give too much away. It's tricky. Uh, but yeah, it was nice. It was nice for that film to kind of have um, not not just a different look, but but uh, you know a different headspace. Yeah, yeah, because he's he's going through a lot. Stuff's happened, you know. I mean, I think the I think I think the the conflict with him and Tony, you know, took its toll. I think I think you know Cap really valued that friendship, um, and I think he's always had to cope with loss. You know, I think uh, in his nature is to put himself last and, and to, you know, think of the, the greater good. But, but I think losing that friendship affected him. Yeah. yeah. And struggling not to be cynical, probably, yeah. at some level. Yeah. What about you guys? Uh, just like a sense of like where your character's at headspace going into, uh, into this next film. I mean, I think, I think for me it's just more, again, about trying to win people, win people's trust and, and find out who your allies are, you know, going forward. I mean, that's, that's still, you know, where he's at. Um, and I don't know about you. Where are you? I mean, you... I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Sam was in Jamaica waiting for the call. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, coming off such a huge battle 
that these characters are coming off of. Everybody's trying to find their footing again. You know, everybody's trying to figure out where they are and how they'll be accepted and looked upon, not only by the rest of the world, but by the other uh, heroes since we've been separated. Um, so that's kind of the overall idea of, you know, where we're coming from and how do we get out of that and save the world. And then, um, you know, in the comics, Falcon is always, he started in a green costume, but then he had that great the red. red. The red and white's like awesome. That's, Yo, I had the, the Migo. The cut all the way down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'm pushing for it. I'm haven't pushing you been for pushing it. for that? Yeah. I'm pushing day, for it. it. I'm push, I've been asking for spandex for eight years. They won't give it to me. Maybe in the Kendrick video. Yo. <laughs> Come yep. on. There yep. you go. There it is. But uh, you, do you, do, do, did any of you guys grow up reading comics? Or I, I know obviously you've immersed yourself and kind of tapped no, into it. But I feel so bad saying I didn't. No, but it's comics. always so heartbreaking admitting to that that I never really... I've read them all now. I mean, now right. I think all of us have kind of done our homework, but I didn't grow up reading them, no. You know the interesting thing about comic books? You know there are only four comic books today that sell over 100,000 copies annually. That's, that's like, unbelievable. Uh, I think it's the new uh, Batman. Uh, I mean, the little uh, little Tom, Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> little Tom, little Tom. Uh, it's Spider Man and three other ones. They're the only ones that sell. I don't animals. even know what the stat. Like I wanted to know. No, what no, the other no, ones no, are. no. I'm not gonna give it to you. Look it up. It's well, it's, it's Google. Is it's is it's an intriguing situation because as the superheroes fly bigger than ever in video games and film, right. and Television. And every medium, the, the core original medium, is not doing very Yeah, I mean, they just canceled Luke Cage. Yeah. You know, the Guardians they, of the Galaxy was canceled before the Guardi movie yeah. came out. Guardians of the, Guardians was, of the Galaxy. It happened in a comic book in two years when that film yeah. came out. Yeah. Oh. I wonder why that is. Well, it has to nobody, do with distribution. Nobody buys them. A lot of them has to do with distribution, too. You used to be able to buy them in 7-Elevens and stuff. Now you right. can't. You have to go to complex shops, and it's difficult. And those complex shops haven't necessarily been very inviting to new readers, especially women, I think. So everybody... The moral of the story is buy comic Go books. Go buy some comic books. <laughs> buy some comic books. It's, if you look at the peak sale, Cap, Captain Marvel in 1945 was like the best-selling comic book, and it was 10 million copies. Wow. You know, so it's, it's way, way back in 45. People did but stuff no back TV. then, like, read. Well, there was no television either. You know, yeah. there was no video games. You know, people play... People used to read Captain America, but now they play him in the video game. Or right. They, they play with the action figures, which, oh, I wanted to ask you guys. Who has the best action figure of themselves? Do you guys collect your action figures? Yeah. Who has the best action figure, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You would have to be an idiot to wait your whole life to have an act. You know how, many, how few people can say they have an action figure? You come in my house, I had a whole curio. Just, I autographed them for myself. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I love it. I got posters. I got everything. I'm in Marvel. That's my, I'm doing it. Can we get you to do a review of your fellow actors' action figures? What's wrong with them? That would be awesome sometime. I think that would be a lot of fun. Do you have a Captain America view? I mean, that's got to be a weird feeling to look down at yourself and you're in your hands. My mom has them all. I mean, my mom, yeah? not like our attic is like a shrine at this point. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She goes out of her way to really try and... She goes, you look a little strange in this one. Does she ever... <laughs> and then sometimes you go, have you guys done that thing where you go down to like where they actually have all the figures? It's somewhere in New York where you got to go and sign a bunch of stuff. No, we weren't invited the to. The Marvel, no. okay. No. Uh, Keep going. It's like the Marvel headquarters where they, they actually make the oh, toys. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah. You know, shake a bunch of hands of people who work really hard, but you right. get to see just like an arsenal of action figures yeah. that really make you a kid again. And yeah. kind of wish you could just they, grab a few. They've like, gotten so much more sophisticated than, yeah. than when, when I was growing up. I yeah. feel like the action figures. I wish I had them when I was a kid like that. Because you know? my, my first one looked like Billy D. Williams. I mean, <laughs> like Lando Carlissian in a Falcon thing? suit. And what I, did you just say his last name was? Parisian. <laughs> say it again? Parisian. Oh, okay, all right. Was, I don't know if that's what you said. That was Parisian. Nah, man, all what right. are you talking about? Someone recorded that. You can uh, play that. Tweet that. It tweet that. Like Lando, Lando I heard, I heard Parisian. Parisian. I heard an extra syllable. Parisian. Okay. All right, I got you. <laughs> but, but they've improved on them since then? You're feeling better about your, your action figure? <laughs> oh, yeah, because... I actually was able to tell them, yo, it looked like Billy D. Williams. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, because he had like this, like, Jerry Curl afro and like the facial hair was gangster. And I was like, nah, don't do that. Just make him look, you know, go to nondescript, brother. Don't go to like 
old, like old Billy D. At least go young back. Billy D. Coke 45 Billy D. You know? He sings the blues, right? Yeah. 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 You know? But it got better. Now it actually looks like me. If, if you think of the movies that you've done that aren't superhero movies, it'd be so hard to imagine the action figures being made of those. Like, you know, like it is an unusual thing. You, if you make a superhero movie, you get an action figure. That's. I don't know. <laughs> Papa Doc action figure would be pretty cool. <laughs> that might actually be really cool. It'd be cool to see what comes with it. Yeah, yeah right. It'd be very fun. <laughs> you know, one of the things, Chris, uh, you know, because the first Captain America film obviously was set in World War II, and, and, um, and I thought it did such a great job of capturing that time. Um, it's so hard to imagine now with all the things going on, but it'd be great to see another Captain America movie set in that period. Yeah, that was, you know, that was one of the things I liked the most about that first movie and that Joe Johnston is so good at uh, bringing to life is that period. It really has, it just kind of aligns itself with an adventure vibe, you know. It's real Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of tone. And, Which he worked on. Yeah, know? yeah. And the score was great. And yeah, I, 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 that was the one thing I wish we could have kind of explored more is, is Cap in his element in the 40s. You know, back when, you know, him and Bucky were kicking it and, you know, really getting the Howling Commandos. And, yeah, yeah, it'd be yeah, fun. That, it'd be hard to do now. Just yeah, just... I, I mean, it's kind of impossible to do now, but, but yeah. yeah, that would have been cool. Fantastic. And um, I would think, uh, if this isn't too goofy, that for you guys, it must be so exciting to walk around Comic-Con and see people wearing your costume, wearing a costume that you've made popular. Just like Halloween, I imagine, you know, it, it must be a very special day for you guys. Because oh, to yeah. see little ones uh, wearing your colors. Uh, Nothing makes me happier than a fat Iron Man. <laughs> Nothing. That is like, that's why I do this. Like, <laughs> every time you go to San Diego and you see like a half put together fat Iron Man with like a 24 ounce beer, he's like, Rrr. like, that's it right there. Well, that sounds like my typical weekend, so I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, well, I would think to see a, a white falcon or a black Captain America is a pretty special thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, like, I mean, because that's when, that's when things really kind of connect and you see, like... Uh, oh, there's a lot, and there's a lot of Winter Soldier ladies out there, so that's also... That's, that sometimes Wait, look what, better I can't hear than, it up here. The sound than the is terrible. Soldier. What did he say? He said there's a lot of female Winter Soldiers because oh, men, men oh, don't right. like to yeah, dress yeah, up. that's true, yeah. That's true. <laughs> Thor's family's here. <laughs> well, that must be pretty great. So, well, I'll tell you what, guys. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the people here today uh, are super, super excited to see you, and uh, a lot of them are wearing your colors, and a lot of them are going to be waiting in line to see your next movie. And um, I think that they want to say thank you and uh, tell you what a treat. It's been so very nice talking to the three of you guys. Absolutely. Thank you. And yeah. thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you for the support. Thank Chris you. Evans, Anthony Mackey, Sebastian Stan. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. Thank you. Thanks, Ace Comic Con.